matter how I am. But when I'm here, I'm in. I'm there. And I know how I got it. You can't take it away because I know how it's done. Even if I lose it, even if I give it away, I know what to do to get there again. Then I can be happy. I don't have to go. Well, somebody can take what I To all the mothers, does everybody have a mother? I'm being cheeky. Well, let's get, let's get honest, huh? Yeah. Let's get honest. I want to start in Ephesians chapter 4. And everything that we do here is, is scripture. I want to start in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. And he says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. Oftentimes we find it difficult to speak the truth in love. Oftentimes some people find it hard to speak the truth at all. The kind of work that I do in Minnesota is I can have somebody come in still strung out from, from meth, from heroin, um, off of the street, or you name it, and we don't have time to play. The, it is a life and death situation. And so that cuts out a lot of the niceties that maybe Christianese uh, will, will allow. And we have to get real and we have to get honest real quick. And, and the, the thing I really love about working with people in addiction is they know there's something wrong and they can't hide from it. They can't put it off on the shelf any longer because that's what they've done for a long time. So if you have bills piling up, it's your own fault. If you're not living the life God said you could live, it is your own fault. Go get a mirror. Quit blaming the devil. If you are saved, born again, if you have the Holy Ghost inside of you, you have no excuse to live broke, busted, and disgusted. These are the things that Jesus Christ has paid for. These are the things that by grace, through faith, we obtain. I've heard a lot of this lately, probably not in Iowa, but in Minnesota and Wisconsin, I have heard my anxiety level. My anxiety is just... I'm just overwhelmed. I know no one would say that here. <laughs> I still love you. <laughs> I love you enough to tell you the truth. I had a young woman come in and, and she had a couple of children and, and uh, she was going to attend our, our program and be there several months. She's like, I'm a good mother. I said, you are a terrible mother. I said, where are your children? With my mom. I said, did you know it was your responsibility to take care of those children? She said, how can you say that? All of a sudden, the tears started coming. Because I was right. She was a terrible mother. Now, I've said that more than, more than one occasion. 
And when they come and they embrace the truth that they are a terrible mother, that these, these things they're doing are not right. You cannot be double-minded and expect to receive from God. I don't care how many days you come to church. I don't care how much you cry, how much you pray, how much you whatever. It is not going to happen. Anxiety is your own fault. It's nobody else. I feel so overwhelmed. Sister, so, I'm so overwhelmed. Would you pray for me? If you're overwhelmed, it's your own fault. You don't start praying when you get the bad news. You don't just get started when you've been diagnosed with something. Now, when you have something incurable, that'll get your attention. Yeah, when, you, when you're dead, it's graduation, which is glorious. So here's what I say, is that we are here on breakthrough where we have overcome already. This is the destination. The Bible calls this due season. We're at due season. Otherwise, does this sound familiar? We, we are back here, which is called growing. On our way to due season. Otherwise, if we haven't planted healing, if we haven't planted prosperity, if we haven't planted great relationships, I've been married to this woman for 25 years. Sometimes it's hard to believe I did anything for 25 years. I married up. There you go. <clears throat> It is a testimony to her patience. Otherwise, we are back here at sowing. And we are in, in different areas of our lives, in each one of these spots. This is where we're at. And so we can't sow, we plant in the ground, and then in a couple of weeks, expect to harvest. Even though your outside circumstances are saying, you need a harvest today. When it's raining, you try to fix the roof if it's leaky. But if it's not raining, some of us don't try and fix the roof at all. If there's no pressure, well then we'll just let that go. We'll let that slide. Give no place to the devil. If you got a leaky roof, you know it's going to rain again. And if you don't fix the roof when it's dry, it's your own fault. You can go to your friend when it's raining and say, Hey, look, man, it's raining. I need help fixing this roof. You can go, oh, I'll be dry in his house for a short time. But you can't stay there. You can't live with him. <laughs> you need to go back and fix your own roof. There are gifts here that need to be used out there. The Lord has provided for you just as much as he's provided for you. He's already made that provision. That provision is set. If we believe and, and buy into the seed time harvest principle, we know that we're on the way. Now, there's a statement I'd like you to get out of your vocabulary, and it's called in the flesh. Yep. You know, I'm believing for this brother, but in the flesh, we're way behind. Why are we in consulting the flesh? Yeah. In the flesh, <laughs> I don't even want to say what kind of person I am. Good grief. Here's what it is. Do you believe, uh, I teach a class, 9 to noon, Tuesday through Friday. I usually go about three hours. Well, we go three hours. And then <clears throat> have our, our Sunday church. We have a ministry in Minnesota. 
and then we have a ministry in Wisconsin. In our class, that's where these addicts come in and we help them get right. We have a place where they can live, where they can stay, um, and then we teach them the word of faith. And then by using the word of faith, they overcome their situations. And it's that simple. And what's really great about these people is they haven't been around Christians to teach them to doubt. So if we say to the mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, they go, mountain, get out of here. I'm not dealing with that. I have one young lady. She's 19 years old. She lost a, a baby when she was 16. She has his name tattooed right here on her chest. She came in so strung out. Her, eye, her, her cheeks sunk in, her eyes rolling around. She came in a wreck. She came in a, she's almost 5'11". She weighed 117 pounds. I asked her Friday, I said, how much weight have you put on? She said, I put on 50 pounds. She's now healthy. She's, she's overcome. We went back and dealt with the things that were, the death of that child tore her up so much that she couldn't face or couldn't get beyond it. So no matter what she would do, she didn't have the coping skills to deal with that root of the problem. And so we speak the truth in love. And we have a house meeting every week. We get together and I say, how are you doing? What are you doing? How are you working? Your, how are you working your program? Are you growing or are you you know, if you're not growing, you're declining. If we're not going up, we're going down. There is no room to stop. There's no room to coast. So if we get complacent, what happens is we start to get complacent in one thing, we'll get complacent in another thing, and then before you know it, we're complacent. Or we wake up with somebody, who are you? That would not happen here. <laughs> what we need to be, and what I want these people I work with to be, is convinced that by grace, through faith, they can. And we start to paint a picture we paint a picture on the inside of what life can be outside of chemical abuse. We start to paint a picture of what life can be when the roots of those problems are taken care of. The only reason, see here, here's what happens. <clears throat> someone's looking at pornography. Someone's uh, smoking dope. Someone's drinking. Someone's being angry and knocking people around or, or whatever the case, right? We have these manifestations of a deeper problem. And what people will, on the outside will say, just change this. Can't you just stop this? And what we do is put them in a controlled environment where they don't have access to it. And so in that controlled environment, we do okay. But as soon as the restraints are removed, they go right back because they're operating from the root. So if there's bills piled up, Normally the situation is there is a root of poverty in your life. Get it out. Yeah, but that's painful. Yeah. Lay aside all filthiness. Lay aside all wickedness. Lay it aside. How do you do that? You do it back here. The reason you don't have what you believe you want is because you just haven't grown enough to get it. And no secret. Just rest. And so when you rest, what grace will do will bring you to that place faster than your mind can get. If I don't, oh, man, what am I going to do? I'm going to figure this out. What am I, gonna, I don't figure nothing out. I don't figure anything out. I don't have to figure anything out. That's what the Holy Ghost is for. He already figured it out. Holy Ghost figured it out before I even knew I had the problem. Before I was aware there was an issue, he had the answer. <laughs> what does the first chapter of James say? James chapter 5. 
If you la- James chapter 1, verse 5, if you lack wisdom, ask God. Well, I tried that, but it didn't work. It tried you and you didn't work. <laughs> this word is sure and this word is true. <laughs> they don't think, ain't no such thing if the word didn't work. Are you, let your elevator go to the top. Come on. <clears throat> what happens is, you know how I knew that we arrived in Tiffin? I saw a sign. <laughs> I couldn't believe I was in Minneapolis when I was in Tiffin. Why? Because the sign said I'm here. So if the sign says where you are, that's where you are. Here's your sign. Just grow. Now, if we were on our way here, we left Wisconsin and we drove through Minnesota, we didn't get somewhere in the middle of Minnesota and stop, throw a fit, that we didn't make it. I'm never going to make it to Iowa. <laughs> I'm not going to get there. <laughs> Sister, I'm not going to make it to Iowa. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I got plenty of gas. <laughs> Drive. Just keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Listen, 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 listen. Linda, listen. <laughs> Linda, listen. You did not fail. You just quit. Yes. You didn't fail. You just quit. If you just keep going, you'll see it. Amen. Now, hold your hands out like this. Hold your hands out like this. And then put them together. When you put them together, go like this. All right? Now look down. See which thumb landed on top. Which thumb landed on top? It's going to be the left or the right. <clears throat> now, do it again, except for make the other thumb land on top. What did we have to do? You had to think. We had to think about what's going to happen here. And sometimes you have to think about what you're going to do. Pastor, do you think this is a good idea? He should say, well, let us think about that. Now, then you take and follow out your good idea out. And if it leads to results... It's a good idea. If it leads to consequences, that's a bad idea. I know, this is deep, huh? That's, a, that's how simple it is. I have a, I have a missionary friend, and uh, I, I always see him in Walmart, and we got to talking, and he says, and it makes a lot of sense when you think about it. When you have the Holy Ghost, you don't need to plan. Because he'll just lead you. All you got to know is where you're going. All you got to know is what it looks like when you get there. That's it. How you get there is up to you. You can get there by, if I wanted to get from this side to that side, I could drop down and I could crawl. I'm still going to get there. I could hop. I could dance. White boy don't have any moves. It doesn't matter how I get there. But when I'm here, I'm in. I'm there. And I know how I got there. You can't take it away because I know how it's done. Even if I lose it, even if I give it away, I know what to do to get there again. Then I can be happy. I don't have to go, oh, is somebody going to take what I have? I don't need to do that. I'm already there. I mean, I, I, and then this is the way I say I got it. I got it. 
I can rest. I can rest in him. He's got me. I can cast, 2 Corinthians 10, 4, I can cast all my burdens on him because he cares for me. Yes. So when there comes a problem, I can say, I don't care. I don't care. Pastor, well, this is serious. I don't really care. Pastor, and then, and then she said, and then, and then, they, and then they hit me and, and I, put your gun up. I don't care. I don't care. I don't take the burden of the problem. I take the compassion to the person, but I don't take the burden of the problem. It's your own fault you were there. If you back up and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you could see how the Lord tried to get you out of that position even before you got in it. So it's your own fault you didn't listen. We've got to be honest, right? You speak the truth in love. John 8, 32 says what? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Well, we know the truth. Jesus is the truth, the way, the light. And that sets us free. Now I can be at rest. I don't have to be anxious. I don't have to worry. I don't have to criticize, condemn, and complain. This is a rule that we use. Her opinion of me, and you've heard, if you've heard Kenneth Copeland say it, I love it, it's none of my business. I'm commanded to love. John 7, 38. Out of you will flow rivers of living water. Which way does a river flow? One way. So we receive, see we're at the headwaters of the Mississippi, we're where it all starts. We receive from God, we receive from the Holy Ghost, we receive from Him, we stay full of Him. We stay full so that we can go out and water the world. The world, I call it jacked up. The world is going to be jacked up. They are going to do goofy things. They are going to say things. They are going to condemn you. They are going to persecute you. They are going to blame you. They are going to do all that stuff. That's what they do. <clears throat> but you, full of the Holy Ghost, will go out. That's our job. You have no right. Look at me. You have no right. You have no right to criticize, condemn, or complain anyone. Or blame them. Well, it was, if you're 40 years old and you're still talking about what your mommy and daddy did to you, grow up. Amen. Put on your big boy pants yeah. and grow up. Yeah. Now, if you're 20, I'll give you a break. But you still got to grow up. Yeah. If you're born again, you're not getting your information from them. Now you're getting your information from Revelation and Revelation is far above all that mess. Yeah. We don't operate in information. We operate from revelation. That's why we don't yeah. consult the flesh. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> now, what I said is we have to think. I would like someone who would like a breakthrough in their life. I would like someone who would like a breakthrough in their life. I would like someone who would like a breakthrough in their life. So number one, number one. No, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. No, 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 you, you can go. Let, you, let, let's, let's do this lady here. All right, all right, yeah, come on up, come on up. Why did everybody just sit? Why did everybody just sit? Listen, I'm on your side. This is how life is. This is how walking in the Spirit is. You're presented with situations with vague direction. 
and you don't know, what do you mean? Who would like a breakthrough? I would like a breakthrough. I would like to sit here and have my breakthrough. <laughs> he who has ears to hear, let him hear. So what are you hearing with? Hmm? When you hear with your heart, you'll go, oh, I see. Then due season is right there. Due season is right there. Then you have it. Because due season, because what happens, that word grows up in your heart and you go, oh, I, I forgot about you. I see. And then once you see it, what did Jesus say? I only do those things I see my father do. That's all we do. Is it? But if you don't see your father do anything, you ain't going to do anything. You're going to sit there and go, yeah, I'm going to like my breakthrough. <laughs> Pour it on me, Jesus. <clears throat> I still love you. So, I'm sorry. You're just like, why are we standing here so long? Okay, here's what, here's what I'd like you to do. What is your name? Twyla. Twyla. Pleased to meet you. I'm Randy. Nice to all right. You. I hope we say that when we're done. Um, can you think of something that you want a breakthrough in your life? Or can you think of a promised land or something that you just want to have happen in your life that you're believing, standing in faith, in grace, through faith, with God for? Can you share it with us? Financial. Finances. All right. So this is what we need to do. All right, go ahead and turn around here. Go ahead, turn around. <clears throat> turn around, spin around. Stand up, sit down, put your leg in, take it out, hug it, poke it. No. All right. So in order to have the finances that's necessary for you, everybody paying attention, right? Nobody's falling asleep. <clears throat> if my class falls asleep, I have a pin and I throw it at them. So all you need to do to have those finances is to go over, touch that wall, and come back here. And then you'll have, this is a demonstration, right? I don't have a pile of money in my pocket. <clears throat> then you'll have those finances. All right? All right. Go on. Wait, 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 I don't want you to crawl. <laughs> no, wait, wait. Now, here's the thing. People, how many times have you heard somebody say they want to do something? Yeah. Yeah. Especially wives, man. You've heard that. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to fix that outside. And I'm going to fix. Yeah. Anyway, we say we're going to do something. But do we get in life, Twyla, the things that we say or the things that we actually do? Uh, both. Do they actually happen when we do them or do they happen when we say them? They happen when we say them, but they don't always manifest until later. Until, until later on. Yeah. So what did we say you had to do in order to receive the finances that you were wanting? Touch the wall. Touch the wall and come back. All right. That's good. That's a good word. <clears throat> so in life, we know that we get in life what we say or what we do, right? There's some people that like to say a lot of stuff, but then they don't do anything, and then they don't get what they want because they hold back. So, what did we say you had to do to get what you want? Touch the wall. Touch the wall, come back. All right. Now, I know this, that when we do what we say, then we get what we want. Right? Billy? Yep. Yep. I love Billy's accent. We, we just had Bob and Sherry. They were here with you last week, and they were up with this us this week. And Sherry's like, I just love their accent, you know, in Wisconsin. <clears throat> We've lived in Texas and Wisconsin, so I'm mixed up. So I know, I know sometimes we wait to get what we want because we're waiting on God because he couldn't possibly do it right now. It couldn't possibly. This is not a good time. Due season comes, right? So what did we say you had to do? Touch the wall and come back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, whoa, 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 wait, wait. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. 
Billy's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna touch you. This is twilight, let's break through, Billy. <laughs> So uh, what do we need to do? We need to hold on, hold on, wait, just wait a minute. Wait, 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 my breakthrough, I'm going to stand here. Oh, 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 oh no, Billy stole your breakthrough. But there is enough breakthrough for everybody. That's it, Twyla. Don't let Billy steal your breakthrough. Is there not a blessing for me? <clears throat> why did why did Twyla wait? This is how it is, man. This is how it is. There's going to always be something telling you you can't do it. Amen. By faith, you'll see. Yep. Amen. But out of faith, you won't see, therefore you won't do, therefore you won't have. By faith, you'll see it. Yeah. Billy saw it. I saw it. I saw him catch it. He's like, just go touch the wall. <laughs> no, just go touch the wall. How, 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 he did it at the Billy accent. Just go touch that wall. <clears throat> but body of Christ, this is what's happening to us. Is something on the outside is telling us we can't go. That's its job. The job of the flesh is to say you can't. The spirit on the inside, the pressure on the inside. First John, what? Greater is he in me than he that's in the world. The pressure on the inside, the God on the inside has to be greater than what we see on the outside. So when someone says, you can't do that, or wait, 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 you're like, get out of the way, man. This is where I need to go. I need to get here. Why do I need to get here? We are blessed to be a blessing. When you're back there, you cannot be blessing. I can bless them, I can give them a hug. Send that to the electric company. Last I checked, electric company's not taking hugs for payment. Heat bill, they don't take hugs and a smile, but I'll send you a smile. You put a selfie, you're smiling. That will take care of my heat bill. It will not. It will not. You have somewhere to go. Now, when you get into due season, guess what? Abundance, overflow, <clears throat> full, harvest. When you have that harvest, now you have enough for someone else. Now you can give. Now you can freely receive and freely give. You can't be back here and go, I can't even take care of myself. How am I going to help you? The church needs what? Well, hope they get it. <clears throat> Are we speaking the truth? Yes. All right, let's... Let's do Hebrews 11.1. 1. I know you've never heard this. That is a lie. I repent. Um, Hebrews 11.1. 1. No, that's Hebrews 1. I'm like, man, that does not look right. Hebrews 11.1. 1. It is so good to be with you guys today. I pray for you often. About three years ago or so, I was here and you know, I've been, it's, it's great to have covenant friends like Pastor Tommy and Lynette. It's great. It's great to have, have people like that. It's great to have pastors, faithful people. It's just great. 
Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith is substance. <clears throat> if you don't have some substance, you don't have faith. If you cannot demonstrate your faith through substance, you don't have it. You can... Mm, we can smile, we can, we can do all those things, but if there is no substance for the faith, you don't have faith. Am I saying, well, you have to be wealthy, you have to have a bunch of stuff. Let your elevator go to the top, come on. What are we talking about? At the end of February, I was in Los Angeles ministering with my friend, Pastor Juan. Um, <clears throat> I love going to Los Angeles, but in his congregation, he had this woman come in that had cancer. And we, were, we prayed for her. And after, it was Holy Ghost was cooking, and we were, we were working. And, and all of a sudden she's going, she's Spanish, el libre, el libre, el libre. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. I mean, she looked bad. I mean, she's the kind you go up to them, you, you know, you, know, you put your best faith on, face on, but when you walk away, you're like, oh man, oh, she's, oh, that's rough. Right? It was like that. Oh, you never thought that. I did. <clears throat> Let's be honest. We prayed for her. She said she was free. She went and had an MRI that next week. There was no cancer in her body. Amen. Glory to God. Now, that substance, healing is substance. Now, in healing or in health, maybe you're going to be <clears throat> just about here. Maybe in your finances, you're back here. Maybe in your relationships, but you are in one spot or the other, somewhere. So, now faith is the substance of what we're expecting, what we're believing for. It's the evidence of what you can't see. Isn't that your theme? Seeing what you can't see? Believing what you can't see? Knowing that you're going to receive what you can't see? It's there. Faith is that substance. It's whatever we need. <sighs> Be anxious for nothing. But in all things, how's it go? <clears throat> it's Philippians, if you're writing notes, it's Philippians 4, 6, and 7. It's be anxious for nothing, but in all things, by prayer and supplication, let your request be made known unto God. Be anxious for nothing. Isn't that a spot? Wouldn't you just like to take that word anxious and scratch it out? <laughs> we want to be anxious. Our youngest is going to graduate high school this, uh, this spring here, a couple weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. And, and he went out and he bought his own car and he has his insurance and he has these things. And, and he, he can handle them now. But when he was nine, I couldn't take the car keys, hand it to him and say, run downtown, get me some milk and come back. He couldn't do it. He couldn't handle it. Some people here see where you should be or where you should have been or where you could be. You see it. And it's not wrong that it's yours. It's not wrong. You're not wrong. You just ain't ready. Yeah. Why aren't you ready? You need to deal with the root of what's holding you back. Yeah. Until you come clean about some things, you'll never have it. Because you're untrustworthy. 
your unfaithful and your unbelief is going to kill you. And you will die in the wilderness having <clears throat> his promise in your heart yet never seeing the fulfillment of it. And it's not wrong that it's there. You see it. Don't raise your hand, but am I talking to someone? It is a must. It is, you can't, you can't graduate. You can't go to the next level. You can't get there until you deal with those roots. Because what will happen is you'll take that to the promised land. And when you get there, you will ultimately be destroyed. There's giants in the promised land. And if you don't know how to fight here, them giants come up to you, they will, they will tear you up. That's why we don't have it. Sometimes it takes putting down a fork. Sometimes it takes a decision to do something else. It takes discipline. They call it disciple, right? Discipline. That means we don't get to do everything we want to do. That means when God puts you on an assignment, you better stay on that assignment until you're done. But I don't like them. I don't care. The people you don't like the most, you probably owe the most to. They will perfect you. Can you think of maybe somebody at work that's hard to deal with? And they're ugly. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, 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 you know, and they do things to you, whatever. It's you, it's not them. It's you. We don't, we're Christians. We don't get to criticize. We don't get to condemn and we do not get to complain or blame someone else for our situation. We don't get to do it. Shh. Shh. I was going to say shut up. Shh. Those are winds and those are waves of the sea. And if you can't handle being out in the wind, and the waves of the sea sit in the boat. Because that's where everybody else is. Back to Ephesians chapter 4. He himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, till we all come to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of fullness of Christ. Verse 14, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, with trickery of men in the cunning craftiness and deceitful plotting. These things are out there and they're going to happen. But as a Christian, you have ascendancy. You have power over that. So it doesn't matter that those things are happening. This is why we speak the truth in love. Getting out of the boat, real faith, you will see waves, you will see giants. You will, it will look contrary, obviously. But don't be moved by that. We don't look at the waves. We don't say the words, in the flesh, I'm someone I'm not making, or in the flesh, I'm behind. We don't say that mess. We don't even consider it. Billy, could you help me just a second? Okay, you're looking into faith, right? You're looking that way. How many fingers am I holding up, Billy? I can't see. You can't see it. 
How many fingers am I holding up? I know you have five fingers. How many fingers am I holding up? How many fingers am I holding up? Thank you, Billy. Billy says, I can't see it. When you see faith, you can't see doubt. It's behind you. When you see faith, it doesn't care about your past. Faith isn't looking at your past. Faith isn't looking at who you, who you were. The only thing who you were does is if you were to take, <clears throat> usually I do this with a whole bunch of them, but if I take the, one of these chairs and I carry it around me and I grab another one and another one, faith just wants you to get rid of the weights that beset you so you can run, right? So you can see. Let's do one. Let's do one last scripture and we'll pray. Let's do Habakkuk 2. I sure have enjoyed being with you. <clears throat> Habakkuk chapter 2. It's so exciting to see the Lord working in, in people's lives. People being transformed. That's Haggai. Habakkuk 2, 2 through, uh, we're going to go about 2 through 4 at least. But, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Is your vision written? Is your vision unbelievable? Where you tell somebody and they go, come on, Billy. Get real. If it's not beyond you, why do you need God? Your vision should be unbelievable. You understand, you understand the way I mean that, right? Yeah. On, like, yeah. who, me? You know, you get this who, me syndrome. You think other people are smarter than you and the Holy Ghost. Are you kidding me? You have all the answers already. Write your vision. Make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. People want to buy you. They want to look at you and go, I believe what you're saying. Then they say, I could see you doing that. I could see it. Now it's not only you seeing it, but they're seeing it. The people around you are seeing it. They know you have credibility to do what you said you would do because you're looking into faith. <clears throat> for the vision is for, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. Here's our process, right? Seed, time, harvest. It's for an appointed time. If we were to look, you, you know what a wagon wheel looks like, right? With the spokes. And if you could say each spoke is a year, and God could look down each spoke in each year, he could look down all of that, right? That's how God sees time. He's outside of it. So when we sow here, we've already had the harvest. It's already in the barn before, when we sow it. It's already in there. It's already in the barn when we sow it. But it doesn't start to speak until you get down the road a little bit. And then once you get down close to a harvest, it's no longer Christ, you that live, but Christ that lives in you. It's no longer you speaking, it's your vision speaking. And when your vision is speaking, there is no thing in the world that can stop it. You've overcome. By the blood of the Lamb, by the word of your testimony, you have already done it. Amen. You've done it before you get there. So that when you get there, you got it. And, and you can act like you've been there before. Yeah. 
So if you don't see it, that's great. It's for an appointed time, but at the end, it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just live by faith. We live by what we can't see. We live by what we expect. The vision is, what is the vision? The vision is what Christ has told you. What has he told you? What has he put on your heart to do? Whatever he's put on your heart to do, it will bless other people. If it doesn't, throw it out. Do something else. Let that vision speak. Wait for it. The reason we wait for it is you just got to be matured. You got to lay aside the filthiness. You got to lay aside the past. You got to lay aside those things so that you can see what to do. And when you see what to do, man, it is over. It is all over but the shouting. We win. I, I think that is my motto. I win. Now let's play. <clears throat> Because I'm not starting anything before I win. I'm not starting anything before I'm finished. <sighs> so I can rest. That makes life easy. That makes his yoke easy. Amen? Amen.